Hello, I'm Julian Whittle from Cumbria Chamber of Commerce and I'm here with Rob Winder, Senior Legal Executive with Burnett Solicitors. Rob runs Burnett's Penrith office and leads the firm's debt and property recovery team. Rob, chasing debts is a perennial headache for businesses and it appears to be getting worse. I've seen figures suggesting that small businesses are chasing a whopping 14.9% billion in late payments and that total has risen by about a billion over the last six months. So it is the problem of debt arrears getting worse and if it is, why? Well, I think the figures in the report are obviously quite worrying. Um, I have seen such figures before. Trends quite often go up and down. Um, in Cumbria, which obviously is my uh, area of expertise, uh, I haven't seen a great significant uh, difference, right? Uh, although that would be for my clients. So, um, but yes, it definitely worrying figures. I mean, when the infrastructure firm Carillion went under in, in January, it emerged that they were, you know, as a policy, they were taking 120 days to pay their subcontractors. Now, I wondered, is is that sort of thing a trend? Are larger companies deliberately taking longer to pay their suppliers? Uh, I think for many years, uh, what is known as supply chain bullying from the, the larger companies has has been a factor. Um, I think that's ever so more in the construction industry especially. Yeah. Uh, they're quite often quite slow to uh, pay suppliers, which has a knock-on effect for people further down the line. Uh, their suppliers, suppliers. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if it is uh, actually going up. Uh, all of the really large firms, so uh, firms that meet two of the criteria of either having a turnover of 36 million uh, and 18 million pound balance or at least 250 employees are all now regulated uh, by the reporting on payment practices and performance regulations which came in at the end of 2017. Right. Uh, they have to report uh, what their terms yeah. and conditions are and yeah. uh, in practice what they actually are doing uh, and that's anyone can search that there's a government website to search that so uh, the thinking is I suppose that he's kind of naming and sh shaming employers who are taking too long it is yeah. uh, the, the reason for the regulations coming in was uh, was the idea was to try and get a race to the top rather than a race to the to bottom, bottom. Yeah. Um, so it's quite new so mm. it's um, We'll see as that develops in time. I think. Should, should biz, businesses see it as a, as a potential warning sign of looming insolvency if one of their long-standing customers turns around and tries to lengthen the, the settlement terms? Is that is that an early an early warning of things going wrong? It can be, not mm -hmm. always. Um, I would always say to clients, if that starts happening or you get asked the question, uh, you need to really talk uh, to that customer. Uh, worrying signs for me would be a reluctance to engage in dialogue or getting the feeling you've been brushed off. I would be mm. more worried than that. Uh, all businesses sometimes hit uh, hit problems uh, cash flow wise, so there can quite often be a reason behind it. And mm. you know, if there is a reason, you can take a view on it. But if not, and they aren't talking to you. I would definitely start to yeah. become a little concerned. Yes, if, 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 if they don't open a dialogue, then that's probably when to start worrying. So when when a business takes on a new customer, uh, but potentially maybe they could be a large customer, what checks should they carry out to assess that potential customer's credit worthiness before they start uh, extending credit? Yeah, on a larger sort of customer, um, general good credit checks uh, there's lots of companies out there uh, this disc of one that I know mm. people use Experian yeah. um, look at their last accounts although they're obviously a year behind which anyone can do mm. on company's house yeah. uh, I would say uh, make sure that the large customer that you think you're dealing with is the person you think you're dealing with uh, I come yeah. across it a lot where people don't actually know uh, an example Balfour BT there are 78 entities of Balfour Beatty. <laughs> uh, various, yeah. you know, le, bra in brackets, London's Limited, uh, you name it. Uh, and you can look them up on Companies House. It stretches about 10 foot if you print it out on paper. So uh, it's, you need to know who you're dealing with because that's who you need to check. Yes. Ultimately, if there's a problem, that's who you'd be looking for, for recourse through the courts from. Right, okay. So 
when it comes to chasing debts, I mean, I've I've seen figures that a typical SME spends three days a month chasing money that they're owed. Is there anything they can do to speed up that process? Uh, in relation to the process, I think you just need to have a good process. You need to stick to it. Uh, they can be fairly uh, automated. Uh, for example, your terms and conditions mm. say 30 days. Day 31, you want to be sending a reminder. Yeah. Uh, in that reminder, you, you need to be putting a date where, whereby you need payment, say 14 days. Uh, day 15, you send the second reminder, a little bit stronger. Mm. Uh, put another date in, say seven days, and on the, the last seven day one, you say, you know, you've got seven days to pay, or we will uh, say pass it to solicitors. And if you put that, make sure on day eight you pass it to solicitors, and then the debtor knows that you're serious. So, so I suppose the message is, you you you, you, you know, don't don't put it off doing something. Keep on top of the process. Yeah, I I, I mean perhaps surprisingly, a, a, a survey. But the survey we were referring to earlier, actually, it's by the invoice financing firm Liberis, and they found that 40% of small businesses don't actually have a clear debt recovery process. So what sort of process, I mean, you've talked about one aspect of it there, but what sort of process should they put in place? What, what, what I suppose I'm saying is, what does good practice look like? Uh, good practice, uh, like we just said, is to have a, a set process. The free letter uh, type of credit control mm. is carried out by most people. Uh, don't let it go for, for a very long time. Uh, I have s- talked to clients who said they'll do the first letter, then the next month they'll do the second letter, then the next mm-hmm. month. You're 90 days down the line on top of your original 30 days. Uh, it is well known in debt recovery industry that uh, as a debt gets older, it gets a lot harder to collect. Um, and to be honest, if you're sending letters out every month and nothing in between, uh, if a business is struggling cash flow wise, you're likely to be near the bottom of the pile to get paid. If you're serious, they know after that third letter it's going to go to solicitors. You're mm. more likely to come the pile in the people to be paid, which at the end of the day is what, what you're wanting to do. Uh, so you need to make sure that your customers know that when you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it, you do, yeah. and you're not going to wait forever for, to be paid. I, I mean, I suppose there's a concern with some businesses that if it's an important customer, they don't want to lose them, and they, maybe that's why they're not pursuing debts quite as ruthlessly as they as they should be doing. Uh, there is that. Uh, my experience, uh, most if it's if if the debt collection part of it's done correctly, mm. uh, rather than the credit control, uh, most people carry on doing business afterwards. Mm. Uh, it's obviously you need to know who's going to do your debt recovery work for you. But if it's done properly and fairly, uh, it generally doesn't. If if you have a customer that's continually having to go to debt recovery to collect money, mm. you probably need to look at uh, whether you should be paid to be carrying out the work. Do you want, do you want that customer? Yeah. Customers. yeah. yeah. Um, but most of the time, I, I know from experience, it, it doesn't end commercial relations. Now, can, can a business try to reclaim interest on late payments or, or seek compensation or other costs? If a customer breaches agreed payment terms, I believe this is covered by the Late Payment of Commercial Debts Act. It is. The Late Payment of Commercial Debts Interest Act, 1998, as amended, it <laughs> slips off the tongue, that one. <laughs> uh, so that will cover uh, any business to business debt. Um, it allows for a fixed sum, depending on the amount that you're trying to recover. So for up to £1,000, it's a £30 fixed sum, 1000 to 10070 and over 10000 to 100 uh, it also allows you to charge 8% above bank base rate, which is very mm-hmm. much at the moment, um, on top of the debt. And you can charge that without court proceedings. You can charge up from uh, the date the, 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 the debt becomes due, which is usually the 30 days. Yeah. Uh, also, it can be contractual interest, which you can have in your terms and conditions, as long as they're agreed. Uh, so they're agreed when you make the contract, not when you send the invoice out. Yeah. Uh, and you can also recover reasonable debt recovery costs, and I put reasonable in inverted commas. Mm. Uh, as long as they are reasonable, you can recover them in court proceedings if you need to. Okay. So if all efforts to recover a debt draw a blank, businesses do have the option of handing over debt recovery to a specialist such as Benes. So tell me, what, what do you do in that situation? How do you pursue the debt what options do you have at your disposal? The 
we'll talk about business to business debts because mm-hmm. business to consumer is slightly different. It changed okay. last year. So on a business to business debt, we'd be looking at sending out what's known as a letter before action, which is a formal letter. Um, it gives the debtor 14 days to pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the threat of if they don't pay is court mm-hmm. proceedings. So after that date, as long as it's commercially viable, uh, we would be advising clients that they should be issuing uh, court proceedings. Potentially you can uh, serve as statutory demand. It shouldn't just be used as a debt recovery tool. So uh, if there's absolutely no argument the money is due, it can be done. It's a messy route, it can be expensive. We would always go down the let before action route if we could. Um, because that brings in the most results for us, to be honest. Okay. So uh, how do you charge for your service? I mean, is it a straightforward percentage of the value of the invoice? Or is it, or as I suspect, it's a bit more complex than that, is it? Um, I think it's slightly less complex than that. <laughs> we, we charge a fixed fee. So yeah. uh, that initial letter, we charge £5 for. Uh, 70% of them bring the debt in or open the dialogue up mm. and come to an agreement about payment. Mm. Um, and then it depends on the value of the claim. Uh, it's a fixed fee, but the higher the amount that we're recovering, the fixed fee goes up slightly, just mm. to make it makes it easier for, for clients to chase both small mm. and large debts. So if we had a, a central fee in the middle, anything say under a thousand pounds wouldn't be worth chasing. Where mm. clients want to be able to chase everything we've found, so that's why we do it like that. Okay. Um, so uh, what? Actually, on that point, I'm guessing, but of a letter from a law firm probably has more impact, does it, do you think, on a, on a creditor than somebody who... Yes. You know, the, the letter from the, for, you know, from, the, from the business itself. I think definitely from the business itself and uh, definitely uh, more than the debt collectors mm. that you see uh, who send letters out to people mm. who don't even know if they live there. Mm. Uh, particularly in Cumbria, Burnett's very well known, uh, very well known for debt recovery work. Mm. Um, most local large firms will know uh, what we do in in relation to debt recovery work, so that could help you know people take you more seriously as well. Good. And what should businesses look for then if they're looking to appoint a debt recovery specialist to act to act for them? Right. Uh, they need to know what they're doing. So they need to be knowledgeable. Uh, I would always say that uh, they should have a lot of experience in debt recovery. Uh, any lawyer can do debt recovery work. Uh, I would be my view that you should go to a law firm that has a specialist debt recovery unit. We have, uh, there's, there's mm. three of us work in the debt recovery unit. Mm. Uh, that's the other two, that's all they do. I manage it, I also do some other things. Uh, but they spend 24 7 chasing debts. Um, like you say, law firms, uh, especially locally, um, people know who we are. Uh, that has a lot more clout, I believe. Uh, and results, you know. Um, it's very easy. I, I see them, these uh, debt collecting firms that aren't law firms. Uh, I've seen them sometimes say they recover 99% of debts. Mm-hmm. They do not. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> does. No one can yeah. recover that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure what our, uh, what our success rate is. Uh, I know we've, we've run the scheme that we, we currently run for uh, just under eight years, and in that time we've collected over 18 million. So we do our job well, I believe. So. Um, speak to people, speak to our clients. Um, I would always say, uh, make sure they've got good systems. Uh, for example, we have a specialist software, which means we can use what's known as a county court business mm. centre in Northampton. Uh, it's electronic. Uh, the business centre deals with, on average, about a million and a half claims a year yeah. electronically. Uh, it's very fast. Uh, the court fees are cheaper. If you can't, if you don't have the system. To to deal with the business centre, you have to use uh, the Money Claim Centre in Salford, which is a paper-based. Uh, it deals with about a million claims as well, uh, but it's people handling pieces of paper, so it's a Slow. lot slower, mm. uh, and the court fees are, are slightly increased as well. Okay. Thanks very much, Rob. Thank you.